no man can get credit for. I thank you for your prophetic word that will heal, that will deliver, that will set free, that will encourage, that will build and give life. I ask you, Master, fill this house. I can feel things shifting in my heart. I begin to ask the Lord, what is it that you want to say about the supernatural? And he simply reminded me of the definition. It simply means to go beyond what is natural and possess it. Live from it and live in it. But many times the supernatural doesn't manifest until we find ourselves at a point of need. And the Lord took me to a familiar portion of scripture to myself. And he said, I'm going to awaken the catalyst through a word tonight. I begin to ask the Lord, what is a catalyst? He said, it's a someone or a something that brings about change by an event or through a word. It's a person who walks and talks with enthusiasm that releases a synergy and an atmosphere that when a corporate man comes together, they recognize the power within them is greater than the power alone that resides. And he begins to cause us to manifest a change. A catalyst is something that is added to what is existing, but it itself changes not. And the Lord took me to the book of 2 Kings in the fourth chapter, and it says, And a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that the, your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be slaves. So Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but this jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels, and do not gather just a few. And when you have come out and come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour into those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him. She shut the door behind her and her sons who had brought the vessels to her. The Bible says she poured it out. Now it came to pass. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she said and told the man of God, and he said these words, Go sell the oil, pay off your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. I began to hear the Spirit of the Lord begin to deal with the season called the middle. And I heard the Lord say, Rob, you know me as Alpha. You know me as Omega. You know me as Author. You know me as Finisher. You know me as the Great I Am. As the one that declares all things are possible. He says, you know me from the start and you know me at the finish. But what is my name when you find yourself in the middle of crisis? Today there is many people that have found themselves in the middle of a thing. But they haven't discovered what God's name is. And I begin to ask the Lord, what is your name? One name is Ebenezer. But that's not his name. That's a man's name. And I begin to ask the Lord, well, what is the name of the middle? And I couldn't find it everywhere I looked in Scripture. And he said this, I have no name in the middle because the middle is not a reality. It's a passing through place that people encamp in. 
And today there is people that are stuck in the middle of conflict, in the middle of trials. There is people that are stuck holding on to yesterday, but believing God for tomorrow. But if you don't let go of yesterday and you grab hold of tomorrow, you're caught in a tug of war. So you can't move forward because you can't let go. You can't go forward until you let go of your past hurt, your past pain, your past disappointment, that God can begin to slingshot you or pull you forward into your full identity and destiny. You realize it's that state of the chrysalis that a butterfly goes into where he's found himself hanging and he's built a chrysalis or what we call a cocoon around himself. But he hasn't fully changed into who he is because he's still losing the identity of who he's not. When you're in the middle season of your life, it's because the old person that you thought you are is starting to fall away and the new man that you're becoming is starting to emerge but you know what God's looking for he's looking for a man a woman that is willing to struggle to fight out of that cocoon the chrysalis to come into his full identity do you realize inside of the caterpillar there is always a butterfly do you realize inside of you there is a man of destiny, a man of purpose, a people of promise that God has declared something greater in. But what happens is we decide to sit down in our wilderness. We decide to give up in the middle season. We allow the struggles to overwhelm us and change what we believe. As I begin to look at the scripture, it says clearly, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet. This means that this woman had a husband that was a voice to generations. This woman was filled with vision. She was filled with destiny. She had an understanding that tomorrow would reign. But how many of you know that you can have a promise of tomorrow, but when you're in it today, tomorrow looks far away. I am here to remind you that tomorrow may look far, but keep swimming, keep paddling, keep moving. Don't give up because every step Every stroke, every movement you take, you're one step closer to the other side. Today, I'm trying to encourage someone, don't give in, don't give up. You might be caught in the midst of a situation, but tomorrow, about this time, things are going to change. The scripture says that this woman cried out to Elijah saying, your servant, my husband is dead. Do you realize that she was making a profound statement? She was saying, my husband who served you, he's no longer here. And you know that he feared God greatly. Now I'm in the midst of conflict. I haven't healed from my past. And now something is happening in my present that is taking away my future. She's caught between a rock and a hard place. What is taking place is her children are about to be taken into captivity, into slavery. They're about to become men that are working for another to pay off yesterday's debt. And in the midst of this situation, this woman is grieved. She says these words. Your hus my husband, your servant is dead and he feared the Lord and now the creditor is coming to take my sons to be slaves. Translate, my past is still hurting and my future and my hope is about to be stripped from me. I'm caught up in a season I know not what to do. And the prophet says, what shall I do for you? And then he asks her a question that makes no sense. He says, what does thy maidservant have in the house? When you study the word house, from the Hebrew perspective, it's a word called bayith. It means the family of God. It means the house of the Lord on the inside of you. But if you study it to the root, it's bana. And that Hebrew word is powerful because it means something to build with. Let me translate what this widow was saying when the prophet says, what does thy maidservant have in the house? She says, I have nothing 
to build with. Do you realize that when you go through seasons, troubles, struggles, trials, you begin to think that you lost the power to build? When you begin to look at the Son of God in the wrong way, like many people did in the book of Mark, they said, isn't that Mary's boy or Joseph's son? Isn't he just a carpenter? Can I tell you something? If you recognize Jesus as a carpenter, he might be able to fix your house. But when you recognize him as a son of God, he can heal your house. I'm here to ask you, how do you recognize the presence? How do you recognize the spirit? Because the way you see him determines what you're going to receive. This woman says, your maidservant has nothing to build with in this house except a jar of oil. I believe today that God wants to break the cycles in our mindset that cause us to see lesser than what God has promised. Do you realize that many times we take the negative approach that 10 of the spies that were sent out with Moses' 12 came back with the negative report and they said, the land is flowing with milk and honey just as you said, Moses. Here's the fruit thereof. But he says, the people of Anak were there and they were giants. Their cities were fortified and we were like grasshoppers in their sight so we were in our own no it says we were grasshoppers in our own sight so we were in theirs the truth of the matter is this they went in as spies this means that the enemies never laid eyes upon them they were hidden they were covered they were never seen but what happens is when you have a wrong perspective on a situation you begin to minimize who you are I am here to challenge you to quit minimizing who God is in your life. When this woman says your maidservant has nothing to build with in her house but this jar of oil, she didn't realize that the jar was symbolic of the power, the presence, and the Spirit of God. Listen to her vocabulary. I have nothing to build with but the Spirit, the power, and the presence of an Almighty God. Can I tell you that if you have the presence of God, you have great building material. If you understand the Son of God, and you understand that He's on your side, you have much to build with. But when you begin to evaluate with your natural eyes everything that you've lost, what you have becomes insignificant. Yeah. Today we are living in a time where we focus on our losses instead of counting our troubles and our trials is all joy. It's the word of God says. Amen. When we go through affliction, it says in the word to number it according to joy. But we don't number we don't count it as joy as we go through various trials, troubles, and afflictions. We begin to allow the affliction to become our language. We allow our circumstance to become our vocabulary. What we're going through becomes the language. And when we begin to express from a lesser, we begin to minimize the power of what we have in our hand. Can I say it like this? The language of negativity makes what you have inferior. You rob it of its supernatural potential. You rob it to be from its power to be a catalyst, a spark, a movement of change. You rob it of its opportunity to perform on your behalf because you minimize it with language of negativity. I find it interesting that the prophet begins to speak with excitement and he says these words, go borrow vessels from all your neighbors and don't bother just a few. Can I tell you what the prophet saw? He saw what she had. She's, he saw what was possible. He saw what she contained. Many times when you don't see what you have, God will put a prophetic voice, a prophetic word, a prophetic person to see into the mystery that you can't discover and he'll make it known to you. And suddenly he'll change your perspective. You might see yourself as a in a place of being downcast or sad, frustrated, lost, lonely, forsaken, and the prophet will begin to prophesy not where you're at, but where you're going. He'll prophesy you out of your wilderness. He'll prophesy you 
out of the state of your chaos into a future and a hope. And in this very moment, he says, go borrow vessels from all your neighbors and don't gather just a few. And he says, and when you have, you shall come in and you shall shut the door behind you and your sons and pour into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. He commissioned them to what? To go out. It began to remind me of the story of Abraham when God visited him. Abraham was still dwelling in a tent that his own hands had made. And God tells him, go outside of the tent that you're dwelling in. Get outside of what you've made. Step outside and look up. Because your seed is going to be as the stars of the heavens. They're going to be so numerous that you won't even be able to count them. Out of you, there's going to come kings and people of royalty. There's going to come a man of great authority because I've already declared it. But do you realize sometimes we have to step out of what our hands have created. We have to step out of our box of what we're living in. We got to step out and look up. And the moment we look up, we're not looking at the earth. We're looking to the heavens. And the moment we begin to see what the author and the finisher of the heavens has created, it begins to change our mindset. Today, what God is trying to do is get us to get outside of our four walls. He's trying to get us outside of our box. He's trying to get us out of everything that our hands are capable of doing. He's trying to get us out of the language of what we don't have. To step into the reality of his kingdom. To look up and recognize all that the Father has is rightfully ours. He wants to awaken the catalyst. He wants to put a spark inside of you. That suddenly a movement will take place and bring change in the earth he said go out come in and shut the door this word translates and it means something completely different than I thought to shut means to surrender shut means to give oneself over to shut also speaks of a man that is willing to lock in to be enclosed in a brand new atmosphere do you realize when he said go out, he was releasing them to have the experience of heaven. And then when they came in, they are to lock that experience inside of this house. Remember the widow said she had nothing to build with. I have nothing to advance my household. I've lost my husband and I'm about to lose my children, my future and hope, I have nothing to build with. But the truth of the matter is, you have much to build with, but it won't seem like much until you understand who the builder is. The builder is the one who lives inside of you. The builder is the power of the spirit. The builder is the anointing of the presence of a mighty God that has his indwelling on the inside of you. And this woman was commanded to go and shut the door so God could deliver her from the place where she said, I have nothing to build with. Have you ever felt like my hands are tied? I can't accomplish what it is that has been set before me because of the circumstances that surround me. Do you realize the kingdom comes to take away our excuses? The kingdom can, comes to remove the I can't and awakens the I can. The Spirit of God begins to show you and remind you that all things are possible. A woman with an issue of blood cried out and said when she got a report of negativity, there is nothing we can do. She spent all of her money, but somehow she mustered up the faith to say, if... I could touch the hem of his garment. I could be healed. And she had to press through the crowd. She had to fight through a people. And she had to bow down. Do you realize when she came to a low place and touched him, immediately she was lifted up. She went from being bent over to being upright. She went from a, a flow of blood to being healed. She went from being pale to being filled with color. She went from being unclean to being clean. Everything changed in a moment to the place 
where Jesus cried out and said, who touched me? Listen to this. The disciples said, Lord, many have touched you. You're being thronged or touched from every side. But he said, no. When somebody touched me, virtue left my body. The word virtue translates into dunamis. The extraordinary, dynamic power, supernatural power of God. Do you realize somebody touched me as a catalyst and it sparked a change? It caused a fire, a presence to move from within me, outside of me. Who touched me with virtue? Somebody touched me with might. Somebody touched me with expectancy. Somebody didn't allow a report to become a crutch. Somebody didn't allow their report to cause them to sit down. They didn't allow the report to make them give up. It made them press in. I'm here to tell you, don't give up. Press in just a little bit more and watch God do the impossible. I love the word virtue because it translates into the God that makes all things possible. This widow, when she shut the door, God was saying to her, I want to show you what you contain. Because all along you had the power to build, but you didn't recognize it. Do you realize that the language of negativity is the language of those who do not have power? The language of negativity is those who don't know how to call on the name of the Lord and be filled with presence to transform a circumstance he said these words when you come in you shall shut the door behind you and your sons then you shall pour into those vessels and set aside the full ones so the scripture says that she did as he said she and her family went out they came in they shut the door she took what she had said I have nothing in my house but this jar of oil. Do you realize what she had could not produce until God put a word on it? What she had could not manifest life because what, when it was asked of her, what do you have in your house? She said, nothing. When you speak the language of death, it does not produce life. What it does is it hinders what contains spirit, what contains life to manifest. Do you realize that your words can stop the move of God? Your language can hold back what God is trying to do. Your mindset can keep you bound instead of setting you free. Amen. This morning, this afternoon actually, I was minding my own business. I knocked upon Diga's door. And I was on my way to the gym. And I said, hey, you guys going to work out? And they said, we're doing it now. And I stepped into the room. My room was the way Pastor Paul likes it, ice cold. But when I walked into a room where synergy and energy was being exerted, my cool body instantly began to heat up. And I said, this room is hot. And I'll never forget what Dina said. He says, because we're at work. Do you realize when you allow the Spirit of God to move, it makes things hot. It causes things to change. My atmosphere was a little chill, but suddenly I got in there and they said these words. Do you want to work out with us? I ate Pastor Rob's barbecue. And it was good. But when I got in the midst of synergy, somebody at work, and I received an invitation, I received a word of good news, a word that challenged, guess what it did? It caused me to jump in. Before I know it, I'm doing squats. 
Before I know it, we're doing planks. Before we're knowing it, we're, we're dripping sweat. And I'm like, man. And then they said these words, it's time to get on the treadmill. <laughs> Why? Because when you get in a room yes. that's active, yes. your body might feel stagnant. But when you recognize the potential that's there, mm. it activated and it drew me into their life, into their style of living, and it commanded my body to work even when I didn't think I wanted to. What are you saying, prophet? This is what I'm saying. Sometimes, if you don't like the results that are being made manifest in your house, move into another portion of the house. The other day I was doing a recording video for a friend of mine and I just lost it. Every time I went to start, I started laughing. Every time I went to, to record, it just didn't come out right. And I remember telling Juanita, I said, we have to move. And we literally moved five, six rows away. And then immediately everything changed. And I was able to do it complete, start to finish without a mistake, without a laughter, without a hiccup. Suddenly it all came. You know what I realized? Sometimes you don't have to move far. Right. Right. Just enough to experience something different. This widow had to step out of what she was in. So when she stepped back into the place where she said she had nothing, God could demonstrate to her you had something to build with all along. Let me get ready to bring this thing to a landing. The Bible says that she took this jar of oil and she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And as she began to pour into it, it was filled and she set it aside and she said again, bring me another vessel. And her son finally said, mom, there's no more vessels to be filled. And the Bible says, the oil ceased. I began to look at the word where she poured out. You know what that word means to pour? It means to grow over and exceed. Remember this morning, for those of you that were here, Samuel was commanded to go to Jesse the Bethlehemite's house, and God said, Quit mourning over Saul, seeing that I rejected him. Go and anoint one of Jesse's son. Fill your horn with oil. So when he looked at Iliad, then Abinadad, and Shammah, he thought, Surely the Lord's anointed was before them because of their stature. He removes the cap, but the oil would not flow on any of Jesse's first seven sons. And the reason why is because the anointing will not flow on lesser. The anointing flows on the greater. The anointing comes upon a man that is willing to allow capacity to take place through every season that you walk through. One of the greatest revelations my brother Rudy ever gave to me as a child growing up was how to make a good bowl of cereal. <laughs> how do you make a big bowl of cereal out of a small bowl? I recognized that my brother's portion was different than everybody else's, but it was found in the same container. But he didn't serve himself in the same mannerisms in which everyone else did. My sisters would go first, Kathy, Julia, and Ernestine. They would pour out, put their milk, grab their spoon, sit down. My brother, he would take the box, pour it out, and say, that's not enough. And he would do something that my sisters did not do. It's called palms down. And he would lean on the flakes. 
crush them. Capacity made available. Take the box. Pour yet again. Capacity was still in the bowl, but he needed another what? Lean. So with a little more weight and a bending of the knees, he would push down. And there was yet just a little bit more room for cereal to be added yet again. Let me say it like this. We always complain when we're going through a season of crushing. Because you think your crushing is for destruction, but the crushing is for capacity. God is making room on the inside of you to put more much of his presence, his spirit, his power on the inside of you. I'm here to tell you today, if you're in the middle of crisis, rejoice because God is making room. The other day I was taking out the garbage, Vega. We use GLAD. I'm not happy when I do it. <laughs> but I was taking the trash bag out and I pulled the red cords. And you know what the Lord said to me? He says, that's what the cross did. He said, I cinched it. I tied it all up. I finished it. And I'm taking your struggles to the curb. I'm here to let somebody know that God cinched it up at the cross. What you're going through is nothing more than a false reality. It's not your destined place, though you don't see your way out. God has it cinched up, and he's taking it out to the trash. He's made capacity through the season of your hurt, your disappointment, your frustration because he wants to pour into you. This widow was caught between a rock and a hard place and she had no idea that capacity had been made available for her. But as long as she saw what she had is nothing, nothing to build with, she could not be a deliverer to her sons. Her sons were about to be put in bondage. Her frustration is I have nothing to build with that would give my sons a life. At that very moment, when the oil was being released, she realized she was growing past her frustration. The Bible says that every vessel was filled. And she continued to say, bring me another vessel. They said there was no more. The oil ceased. It was put down. You know what she did? She took what she experienced back to the prophet. She said, every vessel in my house was full. And the prophet gave her one last instruction. You know what he said? He said these words, go pay off your debt. Pay off everything that you owe. Sell it. And you and your son live on the rest. Can I tell you what the word rest means? The portion that you did not know that God had made available just for you. I didn't realize that my brother was discipling me when I watched him leave. I didn't know that God had more for me. But more couldn't just be added on top without something being what? Squished a little. Can I say it like this? You're squishing is for His glory. Because you know what comes out of your squashing? Oil. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. The place of the crushing. That's where He began to sweat blood drops in the garden. He was being crushed so His life could be poured out on Calvary. So he could become a sweet deliverer for you and I. Do you realize today that God wants you to live not just on rest or in rest, but with the rest? The word rest translates and it means to jut over, to excel, to exceed, to cause one to abound. It means 
to leave a residue and it means that God is El Shaddai he's more than enough more than enough he is the true rest that you're craving I believe tonight some of you have been craving rest the portion that you did not know that God has for you to excel to exceed to abound to overflow in but he could not work because you understood by perception I have nothing in my house to build with you know what this widow had all along she had the power she had the presence she had the spirit she had a husband that feared God that ascended to his highest calling I conclude with this the reason there was nothing in her house wasn't because the man of God was a bad steward it was because he was a tremendous giver the Bible shows us in 1 Kings chapter 18 who her husband was by language. Theologians and scholars believe that her husband was Obadiah. Obadiah, his name means servant of God. You want to know what Obadiah did? The prophet, when Jezebel was slaughtering the prophet of the Lord, Obadiah was a servant in Ahab's house so he knew what was up and he took and he hid a hundred men into two different caves and the Bible says and he fed them bread and gave them water the reason there was nothing in his house was because he gave it all away to purchase bread that he might be able to give water to keep the voice of God alive. I am here to remind you that the voice of God is a needed necessity in your life. Because His voice will always deliver. As I look through this room, I see many people that need His word. Just lift up your hands. Spirit of the living God, I pray now that you would speak ah, to your people. And that you would release them from the mindset of lesser to the understanding that there is much more that they can build from. It's not a matter of what they see with their eyes. It's a matter of knowing by spirit what they have in their hand. And what they have is more than enough. I pray here and in the now that you would begin to manifest life, hope, strength, and encouragement yes. to your people. That everything in their world suddenly transformed. 